So when Michaels approached me to share a little bit about Juneteenth and to create a craft that I felt aligned with Juneteenth, I was very excited. Uh, I feel that it's something that every American should know about, uh, the black community celebrating it and other communities observing it. And so uh, for me in my Juneteenth celebrations, I'm always going to focus on three things as I honor Juneteenth. Number one, I'm going to remember the past. Number two, I'm going to celebrate the present. And number three, I'm gonna to look towards the future. So the candle here represents remembering the past. It, it symbolizes our ancestors and those who have come before us who have passed on and are lighting the way towards the future. Then the paper flowers and the grapevine wreath symbolize the beauty that comes out of the struggle, you know, the, the entanglement of all of these vines and thorns and all of that. From all of that, we spring forth and we create beauty. And so the flowers represent that as do the vines. The current hardships don't um, take away from the beauty of our achievements. And then finally, we have the hidden element for looking towards the future, which is these beautiful paper flowers actually unroll, unravel, and reveal handwritten notes on the inside, whether it's a blessing or a prayer or just a word of encouragement. Uh, you're going to write on the inside of each flower as you assemble it so that the recipient will have that keepsake at the end of the gathering to take away. Uh, they will take a flower off of the wreath and be able to keep it. For this project, you're gonna need a Cricut machine. So I'm using a Cricut Explore Air 2, but feel free to use what you have on hand. Uh, you'll also need some 12 inch by 12 inch cardstock, a 10 inch grapevine wreath, a nine inch glass candle holder with or without the base, it's up to you, some double-sided tape, a 2.75 inch by three inch pillar candle and some sand or stone granules. I found all of these supplies at my local Michaels, but you can also get them on michaels.com. The cardstock flowers, I chose three colors and you're welcome to choose as many colors as you like, but I chose colors that have symbolism. The colors here are indigo, gold, and pink. The pink represents love and friendship, the gold represents courage and prosperity, and the indigo represents justice and wisdom. There are so many colors for you to choose from. I really encourage you to look into color symbolism and choose colors that hold meaning for you. Now that our flower has been cut, I wanna show you where the flower is going to start being rolled versus where it's gonna end being rolled. And as I peel it off, I'm actually starting with the inside of the flower. And as I make my way around, I'll end up at the outside of the flower. As you begin writing, you wanna start from the inside of the flower and work your way outwards. And also you wanna to stay towards the flat edge of the flower, not the, the designed edge. I made this handy little flower rolling tool with a hairpin and some tape, and that's all you really need. Just wrap the tape around the hairpin and that's it. I'm going to insert the end of the paper in between the prongs of the hairpin and then just roll, making sure that the paper stays tight as I'm rolling and even towards the base. After I get to the end of the paper, I'm gonna wiggle out the hairpin, unwinding the paper just a little bit to allow enough room for it to come out. And then I'm gonna use that double-sided tape to stick the end flap onto the base of the coiled flower. And that's it. It should be secure and ready to go. You can also fluff out the petals a little bit. You can curl them and crimp them to make them look more open like I'm doing here. Now that all the flowers have been made, I'm going to attach them to the grapevine wreath using a hot glue gun. And so I like to arrange them on the wreath first, then add the hot glue just to make sure I have the placement right. After that, the next step is to take your vase, place it in the center, fill it with the sand or the stone granules, and then add your candle in. And that's it. I really hope that you've enjoyed crafting with me for this Juneteenth project, and if you have, let me know.